Hi, I'm Dirk Van Babel, orthopedic surgeon from the Melbourne Hip and Knee Group. I also work with Stryker in teaching and training on Mako robotic surgery. Today I'm going to show you how I plan a Mako robotic hip replacement. Before you start any planning of a Mako total hip case, it's really important to check that you have the right patient and the right side and the right scans plan marked into your system. And I think it's also very helpful to go back and look at the pelvic landmarks and the CT landmarks as plotted by the Stryker staff. I think one thing that's very helpful is when you're looking at your acetabular um, positioning of your checkpoints, um, I try and put the anterior and posterior horn in a place that I think will be easily identifiable. So what I might do for this posterior horn is to move the point to right on the tip here. And I'm pretty confident that during the operation I will be able to find that. And similarly with the anterior horn landmark, if I move it right onto the tip here, let's have a look at those two points. I'm pretty confident that in the operation I'll be able to check these two landmarks and they'll help get the accurate registration that we need. Now looking at the planning of the hip replacement with the implants, we can see on the right hand side of the screen here, we've got a listing of cup size. We can easily change that cup size by scrolling through the drop down menu. The liner types, including the X3, eccentric, dual mobility or constrained liners. We can change the head size, we can change the head type. We can change the stem offset size and head length. And all of this allows us to plan our operation. So what I would normally do is start by looking at the acetabulum and go to the CT view. And here we have a coronal view, a transverse view, and a sagittal view all available for us. The purple here is the bony landmarks, uh, and the green is the component. So these two dots are the green is the center of rotation of the acetabular component as it's here, versus the purple, which is the center of rotation of the femoral head as it stands at the moment. Now, if we want, we can change the size of the cup, right, change it to something that looks very big. We can move it around, we can inferiorize it, we can lateralize it. And the idea is to try and get something you think is going to work for this patient. So I think this cup is much too big for this patient. So I'm going to downsize it. All right, that's maybe a fraction too small, but let's have a look. I like to look at this transverse view. Uh, and try and line up the two standard rotations roughly in place. All right, we're at the center of the femoral head here. And we have about half of the um, acetabular component through bone. So that's a pretty good size here. Um, we can look at our inclination, which I've set as 40 degrees, and our cup version at 20. And these can be changed. You can either just type in a number. And change that. Or you can use these buttons to dial it up and down. So it's not uncommon to get a little bit of uncoverage on the supralateral aspect of the acetabular component like this. But this is maybe a little bit more than I would like. So one of the things we can do is just tuck this in a little bit more. Bring the cup closer down to the true floor. Right, and I think that's getting us pretty close to where we need to be. And perhaps if we raise it up by a couple of millimetres, we'll get better bone coverage. We're now more closely matching the centre of rotation of the femoral head as it sits at the moment. All right, and we're getting very little um, uncoverage of that lateral uh, part of the acetabulum. So let's scroll through these images again. Right, and moving from uh, back to front here. That looks pretty good in the coronal view. In the transverse view, we've got a nicely fitting acetabulum. Maybe a little bit too antiverted. So let's dial this back a little bit more. Right, and now we don't have too much um, exposed cut posteriorly. We've got a little bit anteriorly. We can maybe medialize a touch. Looks like a pretty good plan to me. Now, you can always go back and change things around. If we go to a smaller cup, all right, we can medialize that a fraction more all right, and have less overhang of bone, but we're losing some of our um, bone coverage here and here as well. 
If we go up a size from where we were, up to a 50, let's see how that looks. All right. And we're a little bit too medial now. We're down just through the true floor, so it's a lateralizer fraction. Okay. Um, I think that's a little bit oversized now. I think let's go back to 48. Looks pretty good to me. All right, let's drop that back down almost to true floor. All right, and we see that through the full range here, we've got good coverage of the cup, both anteriorly and posteriorly. Uh, the cup is sitting nicely in bone. It's matching the anti version of the native acetabulum. There isn't too much supralateral overhang. And we've just medialized it fractionally from where the native uh, center of rotation is sitting at the moment. When we come to sorting out the femoral component, uh, we want to try and match the leg length and offset to a non-diseased hip. But if the hip is diseased, then we need to make a judgment call about what length to put this component into. Uh, we can see here that the femoral stem version is only five, whereas normally I'd like to have it somewhere around about 15 to 20, so let's rotate that around. And this is much higher than the native femoral version of this patient. So let's just stop at 15 and see how that fits. Then this is a short 125 length 44 offset stem, and it's really quite tight. The blue is the stem and the yellow is the cement mantle, and we're gonna to struggle to fit this in. This leaves us with an interesting dilemma. Um, we could try a 44 0 125 stem, which is a longer one, and see if that fits. And potentially this is going to be a slightly better fit for this patient. Uh, currently this is now making the hip longer than the pre-op, but shorter than the opposite side. Um, so if we're trying to match the opposite side, we'll raise the stem out a little bit. All right, and we now have, have matched the length of the opposite side, but our offset is a little bit decreased. So we can increase with an, a head length. All right, so now we're uh, the same length as the opposite hip and just slightly decreased offset to the opposite hip with the plus four head. Um, looking at this uh, coronal view, that looks like it's going to be a snug fit. On the sagittal view, we probably need to move the component over a little bit and change the angulation a little bit for a better fit. And on the transverse view, that fits quite snugly the whole way down. So that's my femoral stem now planned. The next stage of planning using the Mako 4.0 software is functional planning and virtual range of movement assessment. You'll find this on the next educational video from Melbourne Hip and Knee.